he just got engaged, so on the 7th of March. He was like a jack of all trades. There wasn't nothing he could do, and if he didn't know how to do it, he'd YouTube it. And loved to play some blackjack. Didn't like the rules that came with it, though, you know. And even though his upbringing was as, as terrible as it was, this kid had manners. He loved music. Music was his, music was his reality. It was his escape from reality. He wanted to be a police officer. That's all he, he really thought, you know, and I mean, he would be great for it. I mean, he was six foot four, 235 pounds, strong as an ox, and Russian, definitely Russian. It was my Ruski. <laughs> He's got one heck of a heart, and I think he found that in me too, and it just worked out that way. He had a really terrible upbringing. He, um, from what he can remember in Russia, his, um, he just remembers his mom didn't come home one night. It was just terrible though because he didn't have any, you know, there was no assimilation process. So he said he got in trouble a lot because kids were always pointing and laughing. He said he learned most of his English from watching Veggie Tales. One day the CPS came to school and took pictures of him. He was covered from head to toe in bruises. They removed him out of that home and from there he just bounced from home to home. He would tell me, I don't, you know, I don't understand how they did it, but I would still forgive them if they could just tell me why and tell me they were sorry. I was just a kid. It was something that just ate at him and ate at him and it just, you know, I don't, it's a lot of pressure for a kid. You know, he never really got to be a kid. He ended up getting in some trouble because they took him out of the home. You know, once again, he's like, okay, why and these people who promised that they want me and they love me, you know, just, thrown me away or act like I'm a piece of trash and he ended up getting in trouble and he um, stole some stole some money and um, ended up getting prison time for it and spent the next three years in prison um, got out when he was 21 was doing well for himself um, just bad luck bad luck was just following him he got into another terrible relationship and every time he'd get, build himself up with good job and he did just this relationship just really took its toll on everything because he was searching for that person that was going to love him for him and it just I don't it just didn't happen and everybody tells me that you know he just with all his life struggles he finally felt that that connection with somebody that he could trust and that it was there they just tell me God said he just had it was too much um, his foster sister, which she was really, really good to me. She came to the service. Um, she told me that abandonment will eat your soul and that, and um, she was glad that Traden found me, that I could show him that even though he wasn't perfect, that somebody did love him for the way he was. And I just think that he got, he just got a bad deal out of everything, you know? He just wanted so much for someone just to love him for him. and. It's just, you know, it just kills me how he went through this whole system and all these people who took advantage of him and, you know, they, nothing happened to them. I just know he's not struggling, you know, suffering that, you know, that, those failings anymore. He was behind a church over off of Getz Road. Um, he had lit a fire to keep himself warm because he was at this time homeless. Um, he, uh, the police officers referred him to um, Reverend Jerry Blanchard. He's at the Anthony Wayne Church of God on Getz Road. And um, that's been, Jerry was kind of like a father figure to him since he's been 17. He had a house fire um, and we were displaced into a hotel. And I think being in the hotel and everything, it just, Drayden and I, we, we separated for two months. That's when he had got back into contact with some people that he probably shouldn't have. He called me from jail and told me that, you know, it was, he had a lot of time to think and obviously the path that he was taking was definitely a wrong one. He made some bad decisions and then he came back home and um, was doing real well. I mean, he thought, well, here I made a mistake again, so now this person's just gonna throw me away because that's what, you know, life's repeating itself. Life was great. It was just, I don't, I don't know how else to explain it other than I was just one of the happiest points in times of my life. And, and I really do think it was for him as well. You know, the 
trial was coming up, everything was going to be behind us. We were going to be able to really put, you know, get that, get that tragedy put behind us and move on with our lives. We were out celebrating our um, one year anniversary. We stopped at Babylon and um, it just, you know, there were a lot of people that I hadn't seen for a long time. And I just, I think it kind of made him uneasy that, you know, somebody, a person had come up and they rubbed their hand on my back to, hi, how are you doing? And he didn't like that. And I said, well, let's just go. I said, maybe it's just not, you know, I can see it's bothering you. And I um, turned to uh, pay off my bill. And when I turned around, he was gone. And I was just like, well, maybe he just went to the car. I couldn't find him. So I thought, well, you know, he's a strong headed, strong mind. He's probably just walked home. Um, he didn't come home. And I was just like, that's, you know, I was like, where, what, where could, what could he have possibly done? You know, where, where'd he go? Where's he at? He, this, it's not him. So I ended up falling asleep and I woke up and he's still not here. And I'm just like, where can he possibly be? You know, I just, is killing me, you know, with several phone calls, text messages. And that was one of Drayden's biggest things. If, you know, he hated not being, you know, you can't work out a problem if you don't talk about it. And then I heard, you know, later on in that day that there was an accident in downtown and it just, I had this awfulest gut feeling. I went to court and it rolled around and he didn't show up and I, I just knew, I said, there's something wrong. He's not going to not show up for court. And I said, Jerry, I said, I'm really, really, I said, I'm scared for Drayden right now. I said, there had been an accident um, and I just, I hope that he wasn't a part of that. Um, I said, but I have this feeling that Drayden might have been hit by a train yesterday. And Jerry said, he did get hit by a train yesterday. Mike, I'm sorry, he's dead. It just killed me. He was homeless for quite some time here in Fort Wayne. So, I mean, he's walked, he's walked the city of Fort Wayne from probably north to south. I'm just thinking that, you know, if you go from where Babylon is to our home, it's, it's just a, it's a dead right there would have been a, um, right there where they found his body was just south of Brackenridge at the tracks there, um, at Fairfield. And I mean, just, just, I mean, all he had to do was get down that side street, Broadway, and Van Buren and home. The coroner told me, they said, you know, he probably, with earbuds in and walking that close to the tracks, they said he, it probably, and the, the lady at the coroner's office said, you know, visibility was like at zero. You couldn't see your hand in front of your face, and he was struck from behind, and, um, they said that he probably, there was not a lot of blood, so they said they don't believe that he suffered. Um, he was wearing our engagement ring, and you can see where the train must have hit it because it didn't knock the diamonds out, but it pushed him inside the ring. And that's why they found him the next day at 11 o'clock. I know he didn't jump in front of the train. We weren't out and about and, you know, making, trying to, you know, we kept a low profile and, you know, because we didn't know if, if, and, you know, what if, if something could come about of, you know, his testimony. He was worried about it. He was worried that there might be some repercussions from it. There was always stress about it. It was just a bad situation. I mean, I wish that I could elaborate more. I just wish he would have waited and rode home with me. It's a terrible. so excited he you know he finally had he was you know looking forward to I mean this is just he's 25 years old but he was excited because he finally as an adult had some insurance um, and just there were so many positive he was looking so forward to and so happy I just wish if we had the night to do over again we just would have did a few things different sometimes people are really heartless they don't understand that you know there's a grieving family behind that story and I know that news is news. He wasn't a bad person. He wasn't, you know, he made mistakes, but we all make mistakes. But he was overall, he was a good person. There wasn't anything he wouldn't do for anybody. He was, 
I mean, he's greatly missed by a lot of people. Um, he's not a snitch. He's not, you know, it just, he was, he was a good person. <laughs> it's just what not to miss. I mean, he just, he just made me so happy. I think that he taught me how to, how I should be loved, how I, you know, need to be respected and, and not to settle for anything less than love. And, I think we taught him, we didn't teach him, but we showed him what love was. And I think we just showed each other what love was. We just, I just know I'm gonna miss him a lot. <laughs> it just hurts, I just, it's kind of like an emotional roller coaster. I just, you know, I just can sit, I just try to remember all those good things. And, it's just, I mean, it's said a thousand times, but tomorrow is not promised. Just, I, <laughs> I never, never, ever will not take the chance to let my loved ones know that I love them and show that I love them because it can all be taken away from you in an instant. It's terrible. I just don't, it's just an irreplaceable loss that just, it's just awful. We had all have our demons, and he had his as well. But I think he was, he was trying to finally get them put behind him. But he just still, it still just ate at him. And I think his sister said it best when she said, "She told me that abandonment will eat your soul."